Okay, guys, let's go ahead and do this review for the UFC 128. Um, it was um, John Jones versus uh, Shogun. So um, let's first start off with uh, Brendan Swab versus um, Crow Cop. Um, Crow Cop was beating Brendan probably, I would say, all rounds. Pretty much, he had him on the run for for you know pretty much the whole match, bloodied and battered. Um, Brendan was, but um, you can never count anybody out in this in, in MMA, and um, and that definitely includes someone as dangerous as uh, Brendan Schwab. And that's what happened. He catches um, Crow Cop with the right to the to the temple, I believe, like right on the ear part. It was. Um, and and Crow Cop goes straight down like a like like a bag of rocks and and hits the mat and and which may have caused more damage and then Brennan Swab walks over there with a strong swag and just kind of looks at him like it's almost like he got he hit him and he walks over there like nonchalantly and goes yeah what you gonna do now and then just drops a punch straight down on his head before he's almost tackled by Herb Dean. But, um, yeah, you can't count him out. And and this is probably the last time we'll see a Crow Cop. My guess is that he will retire and, you know, he'll go do what he, uh, you know, deal with whatever he likes to deal with, which, is, which from what I hear is politics. So um, that's that. Um, then we have Nate Marquardt versus uh, Dan Miller. Um I pretty much knew how this one was going to turn out also, which was uh, Nate pretty much, you know, kept uh, Dan Miller from trying to take him down, used his wrestling, struck, you know, outstruck him, uh, did a lot of ground and pound, and Nate, <laughs> and Nate the great wins by unanimous, unanimous decision and, um, and beats Dan Miller, which, like I said, is no surprise. Then we have... Um, uh, Dan Miller's brother Jim Miller, which is on a uh, which is on a run, going against um, Camel Sarasos. I probably I know I chopped the guy's name up, but whatever. Um, you know, uh, Jim Miller right now is. I mean, he's just going through. I don't know what type, how many what streak he's on, but he's just going through the lightweight division. And um, he's definitely in the mix for um, being up at the top and being able to get that title shot. I know he lost between between Gray Manor, Gray Maynard, and um, and then Frankie Edgar. I know he lost those matches. I think those are I think those are his only two losses. Um, is against those guys, which they're about to go. They're about to fight soon. But um, he has just been on a on a run. And I definitely think that he's probably one more fight away from actually getting that title shot. Um, I don't know who it'll be against, but I do think that he do, he does deserve it. Maybe it's against um, oh man, the guy who just beat uh, George Saparopoulos. Um, man, I forgot the name, the guy's name. Um, Dan something. Anyway, going against him, um, and that that would be a great match. Uh, let's move on to Uriah Faber versus uh, Eddie Wineland. At first, I was ha kind of having trouble looking at uh, Uriah Faber, and I thought maybe the weight cut, the weight cutting down to that, to that, to that weight class, really destroyed his energy and whatnot. Because that first first round, he was looking kind of rough between both of the. It just looked like he couldn't take control like he normally does when he has his fights and um this time around it kind of it just kind of came a little late um but he had to use a different style it wasn't like the aggressive grab you and wrestle you to the ground it was more of like strike and and, and switch it up um and his speed was what really showed um tonight and not only that, but his his striking was was decent. The only thing I really don't like about Uriah Faber is how low he keeps his hands. He keeps his hands really low, and if he's going against someone who's really good, um, like Jose Aldo or anybody like any of those guys, they take advantage of it. 
and they crack crack your wrist and crack your arm with kicks and 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 punches and and catch you off guard because you never guard yourself really. Your hands are 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 always you know almost by your waist and you'll get punched in the face before you're able to guard. So I think he really needs to work on that. But um, other than that, um, he seems to be on a you know on the road to trying to get um, Dominic Cruz's belt. So let's see what he. Let's see. I think he probably has about one more match. I would say they would get the UFC is probably going to give him before and the set up that the, before they try to set up the match between Dominic Cruz and Uriah Faber. Um, then we have um, Shogun uh, versus John Jones. Um, like I said before in my predictions, it's just not a very good matchup for Shogun based on wrestling and how unorthodox John Jones is and not only that but he's always in your face too he keeps the pace going and um, that's exactly what happened um, Shogun couldn't keep up he got dead tired from being from the wrestling um, not only that but he got outstruck uh, multiple of times because of the reach of John Jones because of the unorthodox style that John Jones has um, and he just could not keep up. And uh, probably in, he was just, you know, there was a couple of times where I kind of saw uh, that John Jones could have, you know, ended the fight because Shogun was definitely hurt. Like that one where he got, where he basically kicked, did a front kick, and Shogun's head bounced off of the side of the cage. You know, I think it was in the first round. He could have finished it there. But... You know, the way that the fight ended, I, I'm guessing he was doing it the safer way and following the instructions of Greg Jackson and taking it at a slower pace and really breaking down Shogun to the point to where it was very, very, very easy to really pick him apart and do what you need to do. And I could agree with that game plan. Um, and that's what happened when it came to the third round. When it came to the third round, he was throwing all types of types of cr not crazy but just just beautiful combination knee front kick right punch uppercut you know he was just throwing all types of stuff you know spinning elbow you know just crazy stuff i mean like i said crazy combinations i should say um and um Basically, um, Shogun ended up collapsing on the ground. And if you watch the replay, you will see that Shogun actually tapped out from strikes. He tapped out to strikes a little bit before, a little bit after the ref had already stopped the match. The ref had went over there, rushed over there, and stopped um, John Jones from laying another blow. And Shogun is on the ground tapping. Tapping because of strikes. Now look at the replay. You'll see it. He did tap because of strikes. Obviously the fight got stopped because the ref came.